In this video, we're going to look at how many different types of uh, equations you can solve with the TI-89 graphing calculator. I've done some of these uh, in other videos where uh, we don't use the uh, graphing calculator, but here we're going to be focusing on the TI-89 and see what it can do to solve these. So if you're taking the uh, algebra course right now, probably you can do the majority of these problems. In this video, you'll see why a lot of instructors don't let you use the uh, TI-89, especially when you get into uh, college courses, because the TI-89 is pretty powerful. It gives you symbolic answers. But I've done enough videos, hopefully you've seen them. So let's go right into it. We're going to have some systems of equations, nonlinear systems, even a little bit from, uh, I believe, one equation from uh, calculus, uh, solving a differential equation using the calculator. If you have other suggestions, please uh, put those in the uh, comment section uh, below the uh, description. And let's get to it. Uh, start the calculator here. And the first one here, we have a uh, quadratic equation, second degree. So we'll go over here to the uh, calculator, uh, the F2. Notice it's algebra, so click on that. And we have the first uh, command there is a solve. And that's the one you will use for pretty much all equations. And I'll show you some other uh, options uh, later on. But we'll hit 1 or hit enter since it's already highlighted. And then we enter the equation. x squared minus x is equal to 20. And then we put a comma here and put down that next. In other words, you need to let, let the calculator know what variable you're using. In other words, if you had selected X or a Y, rather a Y or a Z, then you have to enter that variable. And then hit uh, Enter. And the calculator tells you the answer is X it can be 5 or X can be negative 4. And you can easily check those that, uh, that they work. So clear this. We go to the next one. X squared plus 16 is equal to 0. So again, go F2. Enter for the first command there. And then enter the equation. X to the second, or X squared, plus 16 is equal to 0. Again, same procedure here comma, and then indicate the variable x, close parentheses, hit enter, and then this time the calculator tells you false. Now that simply means that there's either uh, no solution, period, or there's a solution, but it's complex or imaginary. So in this case, it's a complex solution. So there's another command that you can use Now, I could, I could use the same command just to show you here. I could uh, use the same one, but I need one for complex solutions. So I'd have to put a C in front of that. So I could put it alpha and then C and then enter the equation again. Same process. Comma X. Hit enter. It does have complex solutions. In this case, the complex or non-real solutions are x is equal to 4i, or x is equal to negative 4i, where i is the imaginary unit. Now, if you want to do do that uh, c in front, you can go to the, again, f2, and scroll down to this one, where it's a complex, and then to the right. And you see the command there, number one. Hit enter, hit one. And it puts the C there. Okay. Now, if you use, if you use this command on any equation that has real or non-real or a combination, this command will give you the real and the non-real or the complex solutions. Okay. So if you're not sure, you can always use this. 
So go to the next one. This is a linear equation, first degree. So I, I would I expect this one to have either one solution or it's not going to have any solution. I don't expect it to have uh, complex solutions. But you can uh, select this command without the C or the one with the C. For linear equations, this is going to work fine. So I enter the equation 3x minus 7. Close the parentheses, make sure that everything's in order. And then indicate the variable, comma, x. Hit enter. And there we have it. x is equal to negative 22 sevenths. Negative 22 over 7 is your solution. Okay, so we clear this. And then the next one, again, this is a quadratic so equation. This, again, could have non-real solutions or complex solutions. So uh, we can use the uh, C command here to this one right here. Hit number one, or hit enter, and then just enter the equation. x to the second minus 4x plus 1, command the uh, variable x, close parentheses. Okay, and you get your two answers. Quadratics, second degree, we expect uh, two equations, or two uh, roots, two solutions. They could be repeated, or they could be different. They could be real, they could be non-real. So the, the calculator gives you this answer here. So you can, again, simplify this, or rewrite it. If you multiply the first one by a negative, that comes out to a negative, the square root of 3, and then the negative cancels the minus on the 2, so that's a, that's a plus 2. So one answer is 2 plus the square root of 3, the other answer is 2 minus the square root of 3. Sometimes you could write it as 1 in the form of 1 solution, or write two answers in 1 and say 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. But it gives you the solution. Do this. Now the fifth one is a trigonometric equation. I want to point this out that trig equations can have one solution in a particular interval. They can have no solution. If the graph doesn't cross the x-axis, it's not going to have a solution. But I point this out to you. If you have one solution, you're going to have an infinite number of solutions because of the nature of the functions. They're periodic. Graph repeats. For the sine and the cosine, it's every 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Since we're into trig here, always be aware of your uh, your settings. So you go to mode. We're dealing with angles here. Uh, I, have in my, I have mine set to degrees, so keep that in mind. It's going to make a difference on the type of problem you're solving. If you have it in radians or you have it in degrees. <laughs> so here I'm just going to enter the uh, equation. So I'm going to use the same command. And we're into 2. X is the, fine, the sine function second. And then hit here, sine of x. equals to 1, and then comma, and then x. If I were to, if I were to uh, solve this using just a, a regular calculator and hit the uh, solve for sine of x, say sine of x it would equal to 1 half, and then do the sine inverse of uh, 1, I would get one of the answers, which would be 30 degrees. And then just from basic knowledge of uh, trig, I would know that the other answer, using the reference angle, would be 150. But if you have one solution, you would have an infinite number of solutions. Because all I would have to do is that 
a multiple of 360 to the uh, 30 degrees or a multiple of 360 to the uh, 150 and I get another solution. Now, sometimes the instructions will tell you to, to give the solution of an equation in a particular interval. That could be from 0 degrees to 360 if you're dealing with degrees or radians from 0 radians to 2 pi radians. 2 pi radians is the same thing as 360. And normally I would tell my students to set the calculator to degree mode and get the answer in terms of degree. And then if they want the answer in terms of radians, it's easy to convert. So now if I hit, if I hit enter here, notice it gives me 30 right there. And I told you the, the solutions in the interval from 0 to 360 are 30 and 150 without using the calculator. But look what the calculator gives me here. So notice here, 30, it gives me 30, and the parentheses, 12, and then ask at 6. Now look, whenever you have this at some, some number, just treat that as a constant. Okay, treat that as a constant. So if I, if I were to multiply this by 30 here, it would be 30 times 12 is 360 times a constant. And 30 times 5 is 150. Okay, don't get the other one. There's 30 times 12 times this at 6. But that's just a constant. Treat that like an integer. So this would be 30 times 12 is 360 times an integer times a constant. And then 30 times 1 is to 30. So from that, we see that 30 and the 150 are the solutions in the interval from 0 to 360 and then you can get an infinite number by just adding a multiple of 360. So you can think of this constant here as an integer 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2 and so on. Now I want to point this out to you that sometimes in trig they'll ask you to solve but they'll ask you to solve in the interval from 0 to 360. They want the answer to be greater than or equal to 0, but less than 360, or greater than or equal to 0 radians, but less than 2 pi radians. Now you can do that in this calculator. So notice, go back to the same equation here, and I, I want to solve this, but I want answers only from 0 to 360. I don't want the complete solution. The calculator here gave me the complete solution. I use this bar right here. And then I want the conditions on this side. So I want x to be greater than or equal to 0. OK, so I go to second, and then 5. I'm accessing the math menu. And then 8, the test menu. OK, I want the greater than or equal, so I want 3. And then I put a 0. So I want x to be greater than or equal to 0 greater than or equal to 0, and this is degrees. And then I need a, the word AND here. So I go back to that same menu. Math, then second and 5, uh, 8, and then there's the word AND, so 8. And then I want x to be less than 360. So I'm going to get the same menu. 8, and I want the less, the less than. That's number 2 and then 360. Now this will work whenever they ask you for solutions in the interval from 0 to 360 or degrees or 0 to 3 to 2 pi radians. You can get it in degrees and if you need it in radians you can get the answer in radians. Hit enter here. So here I'm just going to get the only the solutions that are following this interval. There they are. 30 or 150. 30 degrees or 150. Okay, so that's the way you do that. Do this, or actually any type of trig equation. Now, the second one is a logarithm. Solving a logarithmic equation, actually. So this is one of the very basic ones here, but just to show you, you can do it on the calculator here. Uh, again, we'll go to that menu. Solve. 
And notice here on, on this uh, calculator screen here, on the keyboard, you don't see that log. You see LN here, right here, LN for the natural log. I could actually type it in if I wanted to. I could hit the alpha and then the L to get an LL, an L there. Uh, alpha, then the O, Alpha, then the G, and I would have log, and then put parentheses, and it would work. But if you want, you don't want to do that, just go to catalog, and there it is. Okay. You have to scroll through there if it's not in that position, but I hit, it's already got an error on it, so I hit enter. And this is, remember, this is understood to be base 10. Okay, this is understood to be base 10. If there's no number there for the base, it's understood to be 10. So what do we have? A log to base 10 of x minus 3 is equal to 2. Okay, same process here. Comma, and then the variable x, close parentheses. So what's the solution to this logarithmic equation to base 10? Hit enter tells me x is equal to 103. x is equal to 103. Let's clear this. And again, if I'm going too fast here, you can pause the video, rewind it. Now the next one is a exponential equation. Okay, so I have videos on these without using the calculator. You can do this with graphing, a regular graphing calculator. Like I said, this is not like your TI-83 or the TI-84. Those you can do a lot of stuff with matrices, with graphs, and so forth, but it's not going to give you symbolic answers like this one does. This will factor polynomials, uh, obviously solve a bunch of equations. So in the next one, again, F2, number 1 and then enter the exponential. 7 to the x. Minus 3 is equal to 11. Comma here. To get the variable. Hit enter. Now again, I have my, I, I have my calculator set to auto. You can have it set to exact. And most of the time, you have it to set to those, it's going to give you an exact answer. So if I were to bring this minus 3 over, that would be 14. Take the natural log of both sides. I would get it and solve for uh, x. This is what I would get. Okay, So that that's the exact answer. Natural log of 14 divided by the uh, natural log of 7. Or it could be log to base 10, depending on what you use. But if you're, if you're asked for a decimal answer, Hit the diamond key here, and then over here, enter, and it gives it to you in decimal form. So it just recalculated this to decimal format. So you can run this off uh, two places, 1.36, or whatever they ask you for. So clear this. Okay. Now, the next one is a linear system of equations linear system of equations. So these are lines. So if I were to graph these, the lines would either be parallel, no points of it no, no, don't intersect, so that would be no solution. Uh, you get one like those, the calculator would probably give you faults. Uh, or the lines would intersect at one point, so you have one solution, one order pair. Or the lines could coincide, which means you'd have an infinite number of solutions. Clear this now. And let's enter these. So again, same command here. Hit enter here. So I'm going to enter these equations. Start with the first one. 3x minus 2y is equal to 8. Now here I need the word and between the two equations for this to work. So I go to second and then 5, accessing the math menu, number 8. And then number 8 again, I need the word and, so 8. And then I just enter the other equation. x minus 4y is equal to 1. 
Okay, this one's going to be a little bit different to indicate the variable, so it's a comma. But now what we want is we want uh, braces. So we hit second, and then right here, right to the right of the equals, hit this one, I get a brace. Enter the variable x, and then comma, y, and then I want the right brace. So second, and over here. Okay, then close with the parentheses. So this tells me that x can be one half and y can be one half. I mean, x can be three and y would be one half. So in other words, it's telling you that the two lines intersect at the point three and one half. You would have graphed them. They would in, uh, in, intersect at the point three and one half. So this particular or pair or solution satisfies both equations. Because remember, by because they're lines, if, every, this each equation by itself is going to have an infinite solution set. The second, the second one, infinite solution set. But there's only one solution in this case that satisfies both, and that's three, the point three and one half. X is equal to three, Y is equal to one half. Plug it in there. Three times three is nine. 1 half times the minus 2 is negative 1. Three, uh, 9 and negative 1 is 8 checks. On the second one, put it through where the x is. A 1 half where the minus 4 is. So you're going to get 3. 1 half times the minus 4 is a uh, negative 2. And then 3 minus 2 is 1. Checks. Okay. Right. The second one, uh, I actually want this. And this was part of the problem that I had in the first uh, take here. Uh, these are the same, so I don't want that. Uh, I want the number 9 to be a nonlinear system. So I want this to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 13. And I want the second one to be x squared minus y is equal to 7. Now you should recognize, you should recognize the first one is a circle. x squared plus y squared is equal to 13. The radius is the square root of uh, 13. The second one's a parabola. You can solve it uh, Bring the y over here, y is equal to x squared plus 7. So if you were to draw the first one, graph the first equation, it would be a circle. The second one would be a parabola. So visualize that the parabola can actually touch the uh, circle at one point. So you would have one ordered pair as a solution. It could actually intersect the circle depending on the, the graph at two points. So you could have two solution pairs. Or it could intersect the circle at uh, four places. So you have four solution pairs. The calculator will give you the uh, setup for that, or the situation by the solutions it gives you. So let's go ahead and go again. F2, 1, solve. So enter the first one, x squared plus y squared. You get 13. Again, you do it and just like the last one. So second, five, eight, and and eight again. There's the word and, and then just enter the other equation. X squared minus y is equal to seven. Then a comma. Then again, the braces. So second brace here. And then x, comma, and then the y, and then close to the uh, braces, second, and then parentheses. Okay. So this one tells me then that for this, system, and it's a nonlinear system. 
Okay, so look at this one here. Yeah. So this one we already did. One solution pair would be, you can see it, x equal to 3. y would be 2. And you can see that one checks. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. 9 and 4 is 13. But remember, it has to, check. It has to work for both. So then over here in the second one, 3 squared is 9. Minus 2 is 7. So that one checks. And then for the other one, x can be 2. And then I could scroll this over here, but that's a negative 3. And this one checks. Uh, 3 squared, negative 3 squared is, is uh, I'm sorry, 2 squared is 4. Yeah, that's right. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. 9 and 4 is 13. That one checks. Okay, then uh, over here, 3 squared is 9. Minus 2 is 7. That checks. And then the other one also checks. 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 squared is 9. 4 and 9 is 13. No problem. 2 squared is 4. And then minus negative 3. That would be 4 plus 3 is 7. That one checks. And then just to confirm here, we go over, and you can see it's negative 3. So 3, 2 is one solution pair, and 2 and negative 3 is another one. So that's your solution. Okay, so let's clear this. And then the last one is a very basic differential equation. So in all the other problems we did here, uh, even in the trick one, we used to have the variable y, x rather. Here, this y prime that I have here, that means derivative. That means derivative. Okay, so you, you, you encounter that in calculus. Obviously, you wouldn't deal with that in a course like algebra, but just wanted to uh, show the power of this uh, calculator. It can solve uh, not only basic uh, differential equations like this, but even more involved differential equations. I won't go into those here, though. But I do want to show you how this one is solved. So this one, we would go to uh, calculus. So here we go to the F3 is CC. F2 is algebra. F3 is calculus. So we had F3. And here's what is uh, differentiation. I want, okay, D solve. DE stands for differential equation solve. Okay, so I hit enter. So this works pretty much the same way. Just enter the equation. So I enter the Y. And then I need a prime. That means the, the derivative. The long way is to write, uh, actually to write it this way. It would be dy, the derivative of y with respect to x, and again, you, you won't see that it's in algebra, but this is calculus, derivative of y with respect to x, and that's the same thing as y prime. So a differential equation is simply an equation that involves one or more derivatives. They could be to the first power, the first degree, or to the second degree derivatives. But let's uh, cancel this. So we're solving a differential equation, y prime, we want y. That's all it is. You're given y prime, we want y. The calculator does that for you, even though for this one you don't need the calculator. It's very basic. So I need the prime in this one. So it's right here in the equals. So I have the second, and then there's the prime. And then into the 12. Oops. And equals here. Equals, and then... 12, and then x to the third, minus 5x to the second, plus 7, and then a comma, then here, I have two variables, x and y, so you always put the independent variable first, and generally it's going to be x, and then the dependent variable second, it's y, and then we close parentheses here, and hit enter. 
So you got a differential equation, y prime, and you want the y. Well, here it is. y, according to this, and it's correct, is equal to 3x to the fourth minus 5 thirds x cubed plus 7x plus, and over here again, you have that at symbol there. It looks like an at. And that's a constant. So generally, anytime you solve a differential equation that does not have any conditions, the answer will, have, will be, uh, will have a constant added to it. Generally, they use C or K. So it's, this is the answer plus a constant we use C. And that's your, uh, solution to this. Uh, if you have any other equations that you want to see this calculator solve, we can try. These are just some samples of some of the ones that, uh, for sure it'll solve. So, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.